An aircraft flying at 592 kilometres per hour at an altitude where the density and temperature of air is 0.1 kg per metre cubed and 268 degrees Kelvin is powered by a propeller rotating at 1,800 rpm. The propeller has a diameter of 3.05 metres. The blade angle at the master station is 47.7 degrees. Assume the propeller is 86% efficient. And they're just giving us an equation there for efficiency. Then using blade momentum theory, and it gives us the equation for that, and assuming the master station at 75% of the blade radius, then compute the local angle of attack at the station, the thrust produced by the propeller, the propeller advance ratio, and the propeller slip. Okay, so uh, quite a bit in this, but uh, let's um, let's get cracking. So they gave us this these two uh, formulas, and these are equations that uh, I would have derived in in pre previous videos. And it's actually, if you're watching this on YouTube, it's on uh, it's on the playlist. Um, Okay, so what are we uh, what are we given? We're given that the diameter of the propeller is three point oh five meters. Um, we're given the velocity of the aircraft five ninety two kilometers an hour, which equates to one hundred and sixty four point four uh, meters per second. So if I have the diameter, then I can get the area of the disc right off. So that's just pi r squared. And that works out to be 7.3 uh, meters squared. The efficiency is equal to 1 over 1 plus a. Just rearranging that is a is equal to 1 over eta, eta minus 1. And we were given the efficiency here as 86%. So if I substitute that in here, I should get a value for a. And A works out to be 0.163. Now I have all the values I need, I think, to calculate the truss. So I have two. I have the density, which is 0.111. I have the area. I have the velocity. And I have A. So I can plug those values into this equation. And when I do that, I get the thrust to be 28.44 uh, kilonewtons. Okay, that's that part of the question done. <clears throat> right. So, um, momentum theory, this fruit momentum, you know, it says the air is coming in like this sort of assume that these are two boundaries so that as the air comes in it speeds up by an inflow factor so the air flowing through here will be whatever this velocity is v plus some inflow factor or induced velocity and it's a times v so that's what the velocity of the air is going through there So that velocity v naught going through here is v plus a v, uh, which can be re re rewritten as v times one plus a. And when I plug in the values, this is one sixty four. We were given that in the question. We've just determined a to be point one six three. I know that the velocity going through the propeller just at this point here is one nine one point two meters per second. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. Right, so this is the propeller blade when we're looking at it. And we've just discovered that the air at the propeller blade is 1.19, sorry, 192.2 meters per second. We're also told that the uh, propeller is rotating at 1800 rpm so the velocity you know as the, as the propeller rotates down there's a, a relative airflow equal to omega r 
omega is 1,800 divided by 60 multiplied by 2 pi. And that works out to be 188.5 radians per second. So omega r is 188.5 times. Okay, so all of this happened at the master station. And the master station is 75% of the radius. So the radius is 3.05, which is the diameter of the prop. 3.05 divided by 2. That's the radius. And then at the master station, it's 75% of that. So I multiply that by 0 0.75. So when we do that, we get a velocity of 215.6 meters per second. So <clears throat> this is 215.6 uh, meters per second. And this is 191 meters per second. The blade angle, okay, so the angle from there to the plane of rotation, we're told is 47.7 uh, degrees. Uh, we're given that there at the master station. I want to calculate the uh, angle of advance or the helix angle and I can do that from uh, trigonometry because I can say that the angle of advance phi is inverse tan of 191.2 all over 215.6 and that gives me an angle of 41.6 so if the blade angle is 47.7 and this angle is 41.6 the angle in between them is the angle of attack. So the angle of attack alpha will be uh, 47.7 minus 41.6. So alpha is equal to blade angle minus the angle of advance and that works out to be 6.1 degrees in this instance. Okay, <coughs> the, we're just going to Park those values, okay. and then uh, we're going to look at the propeller advance ratio. Well, the advance ratio is just j is equal to v over nd, where v is the velocity of the aircraft, which is 164.4. We were given that. N is the uh, revolutions per second, so it's 1,800 divided by 60, and g is the prop. So quite simple. Uh, j is 1.79. Finally, uh, the propeller slip. Well, slip is geometric pitch minus effective pitch. So what is the geometric pitch? Well, the geometric pitch is 2 pi r tan of the blade angle. But we're doing this at the uh, master station. So we're going to be getting 0.75 of r. So the geometric pitch at the master station uh, is going to be 2 pi 0 0.75 r times the tandem plane angle and the effective pitch is essentially the same except we're using the, the angle of advance. So we plug in the values there. So we get the tan of 47.7 blade angle and the tan of 41.6 which is the helix angle or the angle of advance. 2 pi, the diameter is 3.05, so the radius is 3.05 over 2. We get that at the master station. So we have a geometric pitch of 7.89 meters and an effective pitch of 6.38 meters. Then we want to get the slip. Slip is geometric pitch minus effective pitch divided by geometric pitch. Put those values in and that works out to be 19%.